Hi everybody! Hello! And uh, welcome to today's video of the seven in a row that you guys are getting this week. And um, today we are talking about two extremely important topics um, about our voyage across the Atlantic, and that is... Watches and safety. Yes, watches and safety. So important. And both things that we really learned about and valued on our trip. So we want to share that with you today. Yeah, so with watches, we'll start with that. There's books and everything, and they go over different watch schedules and on and on. Watches are easier if you have more crew because you're on watch for fewer hours and off watch for more hours. So that means you work less and sleep more, which is nice. When it's just the two of us, yeah, the time that you're on is the same time that you're going to be off. It was definitely a larger part of the challenge of crossing, was figuring out our watch schedule, because like Herbie just said, there are so many different ways you can do it, but honestly, you have to figure out what works for you and your crew. And um, most of those of you who will have crossed the ocean probably did it with two people. Um, yeah. That's what we've found to be the most frequent situation. So when you have two people, you have a myriad of options. And we tried a few things before we found out what really worked for us. And what worked for us is not any kind of conventional watch no. schedule. <laughs> yeah, so standard watch schedules are either two, three, or four hours on. And then if you're two people, that same amount of time off. Uh, two hours, you don't get any sleep. Three hours, you still don't get any sleep. And it totally depends on what kind of a sleeper you are. So if you're one of those people who can sleep for 15 minutes and be totally rejuvenated, great. You're so lucky. Yeah, that wasn't us. <laughs> I am not like that. <laughs> Hervey's not like that. Um, well, I'm really not like that. Yeah. So we started when we were a crew of three. We did four hours on, eight hours off, which was nice. Totally worked. But I actually got the short end of the stick because... Uh, Maddie would go first, so she'd get four hours on and then be off for the rest of the night. I'd go second. So and then... he got, like, increments of four hours of sleep, sandwiching his four hours of being awake. Yeah, so I was off for four, so I slept, woke up for four, went back to sleep for four. And then our crew member was the last watch, so he got eight hours of sleep from the moment Maddie started her watch until he started. And then I went back on watch for the very early morning. Um, it worked really well until we got to Bermuda dropped off our crew member, and did the rest of the crossing, just the two of us. So we tried the four on, four off again, but then it was, uh, I was okay because that's the schedule I'd been sleeping on, but I was, I was still a little tired. <laughs> it was not okay. Yeah. Uh, four hours of sleep to me is, it'll Nothing. just make me more groggy when I wake yeah. up. And when you're sailing and when you're on watch, especially by yourself, it is so important that you're totally with it totally on so what we figured out worked for us yeah was a kind of weird schedule um herbie would go to bed super early so at like 4 or 5 p.m mm -hmm. he would go to bed and i would have the evening to do my watch maybe i'd wake him up to see a particularly good sunset but otherwise uh he would get his like four or five hours of sleep and i would go until 1 a.m Mm -hmm. At 1 a.m., I would wake him up, I would sleep for the rest of the night, and he would be on until I woke up. Yeah. So it worked well because it sounds like a horrible schedule on my end because I'm getting up at 1 a.m., <laughs> but since I got up at 1 a.m. and then I'm up the whole day, I'd go to bed early because I was tired. So, And it worked well for Maddie because for her, staying up till 1 is a normal thing for her. Mm -hmm. So... It worked out really well for us. And, and we got plenty of time during the day to, to be, be with together. Each other. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's so important because we talk to a lot of people who just do four on, four off the whole time. Yeah. And, and they like, are never together. They yeah. never get to talk. Oh my gosh, it would be lonely. So it ends up that you're more like cohabitating a place and working in shifts rather than being together. Yeah. And we really, it was important for us to have this experience together. It was really important for us to get one long leg of sleep instead yeah. of like chopping it up. Yeah. So we each got a full eight hours of sleep every mm -hmm. night and that was just all the difference. Yeah. It just made it totally great. Uh, so, the crossing. So watches and, and that really has a lot to do with safety because if you don't have a watch schedule that's working perfectly for you, 
one of you or both of you is going to be a little bit groggy or off during their watch, and that can be a really big problem. Yeah, you might not be as alert, and then you don't notice nav lights in the distance or storms approaching, or all sorts of things. Yeah, I mean, and if you need to be really quick to reef a sail um, or drop a sail or do something really important uh, for the safety of your boat and its crew, mm -hmm. and you don't have the energy to do that... It's a problem. Trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So that was another big thing is whenever you're coming off watch, you pretty much give a good briefing to the person coming on the watch, what's been going on, systems you're watching, how the conditions have been changing. That way they know what's going on. Yes. And a really good thing, when you're going to start the, the night watches, reef down because you're probably going to need to reef down later and then you're going to have to wake crew up to do the reefing versus just reef now and then go to sleep get a really nice night's sleep yeah it was more important to us to have a reefed sail plan at night and move a tad slower than it was to risk having to wake another person up during their sleep time to reef and lower a sail um if something was coming and honestly uh it worked so well for us yeah now that being said there were a lot of nights that we were full sail or light air sails all night long, like for days yeah. on end. And then when the weather starts changing you, and reef that down just has to do with keeping an eye on the weather. If you see that there is literally nothing coming, that's a pretty good indication that you can leave your sails up all and night. Just keep going. Yeah. Um, but if there's any kind of chance that a system might come over you, any kind of clouds in the distance, it's a really good practice to reef down. Yeah, and we actually so we nickname all our sails as you guys know. <laughs> And our storm trysail, we actually call them PJ because mm -hmm. it's our boat's pajamas. Yeah. And if there were just like squalls or just bad weather on the horizon, we just put PJ up and mm -hmm. we we were good. And then if there were, we were going downwind as well, which was a huge help. So downwind, we'd ease him and he acted as enough sail to have us moving. Mm -hmm. And if the wind picked up a lot, well, we're already in our storm sails, so yeah. we're fine. Yeah. And we did have it set so that you know, if something needed to happen so that a person wasn't single handing at night when it came to going out onto the, onto the deck. Yeah. It was very important that we had an understanding that the person going out would which was usually Herbie, honestly, yeah. um, would wake the other person up so that they could watch them. Yeah. Because if you fall overboard and you're not clipped in, which we'll get into that in a moment. But if you're not clipped in, you're gone. Yeah. They're never going to find you. They have no idea when you fell off, and mm -hmm. they're going away, and you're done. If you are clipped in, you'll be dragged until you drown, <laughs> and they'll come out and find your body. It's horrible. Yeah, but, please, but it's true. Please, so, If somebody's going up onto the deck at any time, during the day or during the night, but especially during the night, make sure there is the other crew member out there watching. Yeah. Just keep an eye on them. They don't have to be in their fallies or anything, they can literally just poke their head out of the companion way. Yep. Keep an eye on you. If you fall overboard, they can pull you in. That's all. Yeah. Um, so that does bring us to... Safety. Safety. <laughs> the, uh, the major, major importance of wearing a life jacket. Now, there were times, if you go back into our videos, when the weather was so extremely calm yeah. that we did not feel the need to wear a life jacket because we were all out there. We were all watching each other. It was all daylight and we weren't moving. <laughs> and we were not moving at all. So if a person fell in, it would be really, they, yeah. they would go nowhere. <laughs> that being said, we don't condone that behavior. Like we don't recommend that. Yeah. Um, Our rule was if you wanted to take your life jacket off, you had to ask the other person if it was okay with mm -hmm. them if you took off your life jacket. Yeah. Um, if you asked us now, after the fact, we would say that have, have your life jacket on at all times. I mean, yeah. you should never risk ever. I mean, cause we've, we had rogue waves, you know, there's, there's Stuff never happens. a time when you should not have your life jacket on. Risking being a little bit hypocritical there, I think it's important to say. However, every single time we weren't in the doldrums, we had our life jackets on, and the ones that we use are these West Marine life jackets. So they're pretty light, and unfortunately, they don't design life jackets for women. So if you have any kind of a chest, they're really uncomfortable. But 
That's why Maddie didn't wear one most of the time. Yeah. Like, if it was calm, she'd be like, can I take this off? And I'd be like, okay. Yeah. I always had mine on because they fit great on a guy. Yeah. So that was my one, like... Gripe. Gripe, is that they don't actually make... If you know of a life jacket that's comfortable on a woman, please let me know. I would love to hear about it. Yeah, um, and we will be wearing that if yeah, you tell us about it. Please. But otherwise, we use this, and really the important most thing. important part is this part, the harness. Yeah, so this life jacket, it has a harness built in, and it's with a D-ring system. So you hook these together, and then you have the tether. So this tether is from West Marine. And we got the double clip, so you can be cli clipped in to something at all times, and some, if it's really rough out, you can be clipped into two things at all times. Yeah. And the reason for the double clip system is if it's really rough, and you think about it, you only have one clip, so you're clipped into something, so you're safe. And then the moment you need to unclip to clip into something different, you are, for a very short moment, not clipped in. So the idea of the two clips is you literally, <laughs> you're clipped in, you clip into something else, then you unclip. So at one point you're double clipped. Yeah. It's really annoying and repetitive <laughs> when you're like trying to like go across the deck because you're clipping in multiple times. But it's worth it because it's it. your life. And then it's got this feature here that's like got this safety removal uh, so that yeah. if you are being dragged under the keel or something, you or can... Or just dragged by the boat. You can pull yeah. it to not be drowned. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is when you pull that, you are then disconnected from the boat. So... Uh, yeah, it, it it depends on the circumstances, but the point is always be clipped in. Yeah. Always. Now, uh, another thing with jack lines, you'll see a lot of people will put the jack lines out if the weather gets bad. Uh, and the reason is the jack line material isn't UV stable. So the UV actually degrades it. And then when you need it, if you had them out all the time, it'll just snap. <laughs> and then You're done. So we didn't use that kind of material because we think that that's dumb. Uh, what we use is actual rope. Uh, it's very strong. It's half inch three length. I wouldn't use Dyneema. I, we use Dyneema for a lot, if you've noticed. Uh, I wouldn't use Dyneema for jack lines because they don't have any stretch. So if you fall overboard, it's going to like shock load you and <laughs> might like pop an organ. Uh, the nylon, the three lay especially, it'll stretch 20% at breaking strength. So what that means is it's a little shock absorber so that while you're being like flung and hurled and like snapped, it's just a little bit of elasticity to not like rupture your spleen. <laughs> so there were a few times during our crossing that actually being clipped in probably saved our lives. And lifelines did as well. Yeah. Uh, there was one time that I very strongly remember. I was up on the deck uh, changing the head sails and a huge wave just came and washed over the deck and I was on the port side and before I knew it I was in the strainer on the right side uh, on the starboard so I got just picked up and just swept across the deck I felt the hatches the grab rails everything like bumping under my butt as I was mm. just like scooting along and I was clipped in on the port side so I was tethered but we have uh, netting on the on our lifelines in the bottom half and in the forward section I have it go all the way to the top lifeline and I was caught in that net. I got held. So we yeah. really recommend having both life, like regular lifelines and then chest high lifelines. Yeah. A lot of times you'll see us in the videos like clipping into the chest high lifelines. Yeah, um, so it's a clear unobstructed yeah. thing that you can clip into and it'll take you from the cockpit all the way up to the mast. Yeah. And, and then at the mast, if you need to go forward, you can clip into the jack lines and run forward. Exactly. Um, some people like Sailing Uma, they don't have lifelines at all. I really think it's a matter of preference um, yeah. for them. I mean... It's worked. It's worked for them. Uh, honestly, for me, it really makes me nervous. <laughs> and, like, you'll see, like, J-Class racing yachts. <laughs> yeah. They don't have lifelines. Like, every boat's set up differently. Yeah. And it's what you're comfortable with. Exactly. Uh, I am personally comfortable with a giant net all around me holding me and, like, things to grab onto everywhere because... It makes me feel more safe, and then I'll go up onto the forepeak in a storm yeah. because I have to, and mm -hmm. I feel safe. Safety is our number one concern. Yeah. Now, um, the second thing is you need to keep yourself safe mm -hmm. from the elements, so that's where foul weather gear comes in. So we both have these pretty intense jackets. This is kind of the top-tier West Marine brand, uh, and it has, you know, the lining here. And it's got 
the really important reinforcement in the sleeves. So you've got these two layers here and the hood, which comes out and can like form to your head. So having proper foul weather gear is really important. And honestly, it is super expensive, but some things it. you just need to, you know, if it's your life on the line, you need to just go for it because, um, the last thing you want in a long journey across an ocean or even down a coast is a raging fever <laughs> or, hypothermia. or hypothermia, like you, you, cause you're going to be wet and we recommend pants as well. We both have a pair of, uh, foul weather pants. Yep. As far as shoes go, um, we have a liter footwear, which they have sponsored us and uh, we're so glad that they did because that is the perfect footwear to be wearing during foul weather because yeah. it will keep your feet warm but also they drain out yeah i used to go barefoot because anything i wore they just got sopping wet mm -hmm. and then when you're running on the deck it gets a little slippery in these bad times yeah so the elite footwear it has good grip you have a good sole and it dries quickly so as you get pelted with water it then dries and you're mm -hmm. good to go and of course, since they're sponsoring us and we really do like them, um, we can mention that if you would like a discount on your a liter fit footwear, you want to check them out. Um, there is a link in the description down below with the discount code, which is rigging 15. Uh, we definitely recommend that you check them out. They're really good. Yeah. With the foul weather gear, it's, you don't have to buy the expensive kind. I have a $500 jacket. I got it on sale. It was an $800 jacket, but it's. Uh, a Helly Hansen one, and it's like super heavy duty. Uh, things you want are uh, gaskets. So it'll have a gasket at your wrist and then nice tight fitting around your neck. That way it keeps you dry. Uh, Maddie has the West Marine Third Reef one, which is, it's just like a little bit shy of what the Helly Hansen has, but it was like $200 or something. It mm -hmm. was a great deal. And if it's, you know, we're doing watches at night, and it's really bad weather, I'll actually sleep in the cockpit. That way, if she needs me for anything, she can just like wiggle my foot and I'm up and ready to do whatever she needs. Yeah, so it is important for both of you to have the foul weather gear. Um, his is a little more intense because if we're in a situation where somebody needs to go up onto the bow or something, it's going to be him. Yeah, because if uh, I'm stronger, so if yeah. a sails needs to be wrangled with, I'll go do it rather than her because yeah. I'm like twice her weight. So <laughs> it's just better all around. <laughs> yeah. Because while I'm up there, I know she's manning the helm and making sure that we're not going to jive accidentally or just everything. And there's times where I'm up there and oh, communication is super important for safety. So we have a system. We know what we're doing and when, and mm -hmm. she knows what's going on. So when we're bringing down a sail, we don't just release the sheets because <laughs> they'll go in the water and foul the prop. So when she sees the sail coming down, she knows when, and she'll start easing the sheet. That way I can pull it onto the deck. Like we work great and it's really good to have hand signs or do it so much that you don't even need to talk yeah. because at night you can't see or hear and you can't hear if it's really windy. Yeah. So, I mean, these are all things that you need to go over and plan before you go out, obviously. And we do have another video that we put out before we left about all the safety gear we have on the boat uh, mm -hmm. that includes like our life raft and um, our life suits and everything that we have. Ditch so bag. ditch yeah. bag. I do recommend checking out that video if you want to hear more. Um, this video is more of just a review of what we used. And Thankfully, we, we didn't, didn't have use to use any of that like crazy intense safety equipment that we do have. Like a survival suit. <laughs> right. Um, so <laughs> if you're interested in that, do check out that video. But right now we're just talking about what we used, why it's important, and um, what we would suggest for you if you are going to be crossing an ocean. And uh, I think that we did cover pretty much everything. Yeah. Now, one last thing when it comes to safety... Yeah. The sails are safety. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will drop their sails and turn into a powerboat when a storm comes. That's not really good. You have issue of dirt being pushed up into the, or being lifted and then sucked into the engine, clogging the filter. Or if the tank's a little low, it'll slosh around so much, you'll actually suck air into the fuel line. And then all these things, your diesel cuts out. So it's really good to know how to sail safely in these situations because 
you're a sailboat. So have your storm sails, know how to use them, yes. and actually do use them. We did come across squalls. Um, it wasn't all, like, totally beautiful weather as we crossed. Uh, there were a few days where we just had squall, squall, squall all in a row. And yeah. we sailed through all of them. And you can mm -hmm. actually, if you know what you're doing, you can use them to go faster to your destination. If they're against you, then you need to know how to heave to and handle that situation as it comes but also understanding the weather systems mm -hmm. will then let you know where you need to go to use that storm for an extra push and we are going to be talking about storms and, and weather routing weather routing yeah. in a next video so make so. sure you subscribe that way you know exactly when that comes <laughs> stay out stay tuned for that one and um thanks guys if you have any suggestions on further safety measures mostly uh on a a life vest that fits women. <laughs> um, but really, we'd love to hear your experiences on this. We do want this to be kind of like a, a talk back. Yeah. yeah. Um, so please leave your comments uh, down below and tell us what you have experienced or what you think about what we experienced. Yeah. And if there's any safety equipment that we don't use that you use a lot mm -hmm. or think that we should add, please let us know. Absolutely. Thanks so much for listening. And we'll see you next time tomorrow. <laughs>